I wanted to uh, start uh, asking a few questions about the nightcap on Minjumbul and questions that relate to their own statements. I'm not going to offer too much conjecture on these statements other than perhaps to ask questions about things that don't really make too much sense. Like um, this sacred land, sacred people, pristine, beautiful wilderness reserve area that is trying to be taken up into development where over 400 some say, well, they keep contradicting. Is it 440 lots or are we going for 800 and something lots? I mean, you know, it's, it's variable. But the question is, in this pristine um, community where to buy in it's worth 285000 with a potential to be worth 450000 with also member benefits of an income from the community's businesses. So getting a share in a um, development like this is um, pretty valuable considering that it is at a uh, a maximum worth 450,000 plus income on a regular basis as a member of the community to receive regular returns from all the monies that are vested back in through the community and the profits that are received which I wonder if the taxman knows about all these profits. But considering the um, Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock video on the legal structure that they've set up, which is intentfully deliberate to conceal the activities and financial incomes of the members and to ensure that any legal vested parties such as banks, government bodies, the tax office or anything like that um, would have nothing to recover or no way to recover it from anyone because all assets are maintained by the community and thereby an individual member all they actually have is a piece of paper that's a certificate that they could take now this is something that Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin make very clear out of their own mouths that it is intentfully deliberate to conceal their activities. They do not wish their income and their activities to be known by the usual bodies that should observe the income of people. We all have to live by the rules but these people want to set themselves up apart from it. But we're going to stick to questions. Now the first question I have regarding this place is the actual address they give. 3220 Kyogle Road now, that's a new one to me because what are the five addresses involved with the development? The five addresses involved with the development 2924, 2956, 2984, 3222, 3234. There is no 3220. So that address they're given there does not relate to any of the, address, the addresses that correlate to the project itself. 
So, what does this th 3220 Cuyagle Road relate to? Okay, so we go to the council and they'll tell us exactly. This here, what we're looking at here, is um, the Sphinx Rock Cafe is there, there's the uh, general store and servo, there's other little shops there and that's the Mount Burrell Caravan Park. But it's actually saying, I'm not sure here whether, because that's actually highlighted, I'm assuming that it's this part on that side of the road and the, um, well, pretty much the business centre of Mount Burrell. Now, this business centre of Mount Burrell is also claimed to be an asset that will bring back profits to the community. This is in the um, Nightcap documentary where they say that they um, are part of the community and it will bring back profits from those businesses back into the community. Yet, they are not included in any of the... Um, this is the con consulting firm that have worked closely with the developer to develop this... Um, you know, this de um, development application for five properties that do not include 3220 Cuyagle Road. This is the only mention of this place. So how does the Nightcap community relate to the business going on at 3220 when it's not even mentioned as even being part of their community. This is a um, little bit of a uh, query to begin with. I mean, uh, they're the ones saying that a completely unrelated address is where they're at. So that's my first question. Now, the second question would come under their FAQs. Now, I was just browsing through here and I was looking through a few things. You know, they're saying yes to everything. It's like, yes, in theory, yes, you know, yes, there's water there, but, you know, um, you're still reliant upon tax water, uh, tank water. And... Uh, you know, running irrigation pipes up to um, 400 and something odd uh, lots. Sorry, but that's a lot of infrastructure that they're not going to put in. You're going to be on tank water. And any ideas that you're going to pump it out of the local dam or anything like that, you'll run the dam dry. And it's not allowed anyway. So um, the thing I liked here too is that um, when they referred to free loving hippies but they want an active group mentality to me what that actually says is herd mentality you know sheep they don't want any free thinkers now that's just my take on it I mean group mentality is that not a herd mentality now this little question here I found very interesting. Can you have pets and are there any restrictions? Pets are allowed with no restrictions envisioned, envisioned at this time. Now here's an interesting thing that the whole of this time they have been working on the premise of the original lapsed DA 06-1054.1 in which three lots not 21 were up for development and they make it um, reference to it 
all the time. This is how they base it that they can get approval again because three lots on the first application um, was approved but nothing was ever done, sell it lapsed. So certainly we can get approval for 21 lots which is essentially, you know, 10 times, 50 times bigger in land wise and everything than the first lot which was originally they wanted six parcels of land included in that and the council said no, only three. So they didn't want anything big, they wanted it kept small. So instead of keeping it small they just went way over the top, yeah let's not worry about six, let's go for 21 lots. 21 lots that were never on the original. Three of the lots that they're going for now were on the original. But where are the other 18 lots? Where's the, the development application? We'll get on to that in a little bit. But first, let's have a look at this statement here that says that pets are allowed. Now, based on the original application that they keep loving to refer to, I think it clearly says here, no dogs, cats, rabbits, ferrets, or hard hoofed animals. Okay, so that says essentially no pets. Now, why, if it's in the original DA that they keep referring to, even though it's lapsed, these would still be the same conditions that they would say apply. This is what they're trying to get at. You know, we had approval in the first place, we get the same thing back now. You know, no hassles. So, pets are allowed with no restrictions envisioned. That is clearly not what the original application approval says. No dogs, cats, rabbits, ferrets or hard hoofed animals. And they also did mention in one of the videos how there would need to be organisation of gates. And the only reason you need to organise gates is because you're grazing cattle. Now cattle happen to be a hard hoofed animal. Okay, so we're finding a few contradictions here just in little things like on one hand the original application says no pets not even grazers. And on the other side, at uh, the Nightcap on Mingimble website, they're promoting that, yeah, you can have pet pets. So I would assume that just even that little bit is a little bit misleading. Well, it is, because pets are allowed is definitely the opposite to no dogs, cats, or, <laughs> or are we going to consider that, oh, they didn't say birds, so maybe they're referring to pets as birds. Well, we don't know. But then they do go on to say about domesticated dogs, pointing out that as long as they're adequ adequately housed, no, regarding no dogs, cats, rabbits, ferrets, or hard-hoofed animals. It's as plain as what is highlighted there in the development application that has been approved and lapsed and no longer relevant. So that's just on the issue of pets. Let's look at the next issue, which is this one here. Now this was an interesting little addition to the site because I didn't notice this last time and it's understandable because it only happened in September. And it resulted in this little article here that I can't see because I don't have a subscription. So I don't know what the Northern Star wrote with the press release of answers that um, this little link here leads to the, if you can see down the bottom, nightcap or mingenable media response. So let's have a look at that media response. 
So it's dated the 17th of September 2020. That date seems familiar for some reason. So what they're saying here in what is being presented to the public is the development approval application was first submitted to Council in November 2019. So now what they're saying is that it's not the original lapsed uh, development application. It is a new one that was first submitted to Council in November 2019. So we go down to um, question 16. Again, when asked about uh, the uh, DA application, they say the DA application was submitted to Council in 2019. Alright, so there should be a development application at the Council website for November last year. They're clearly stating it has been submitted. So let's have a look at the submitted DAs for the last year. I've already brought it up and zoomed in so I don't have to waste time. As you can see, DAs submitted in the past year. Now the area we're talking about is Mount Burrell to Kungu there. Okay, so ultimately or you can only see one and this is one of the ones I've already previously discussed 3234 Kyogle Road and it's a guy just wanting to build his house and shed you know it's just any normal development uh, application for residential living so can we confirm from the council's own website where this development application was submitted in November last year and it has been up for public comment. We cannot find a single DA. Nothing. The only one is that, even through direct search of all the properties involved. But since we've got 3220 involved, well, do they have any applications perhaps lodged against them? No, no applications recorded. So clearly, there are no submitted development applications to the councils, to the council for any of the properties in question relating to a development of a community for a stage one road infrastructure and the creation of bridges. None. Now, I am confused and would invite the Nightcap community to answer how it can hang on, I'll just bring that up, how it can have submitted an application to the council nearly a year ago and still there be no record anywhere of it. Now if they had submitted an application as they say, wouldn't you assume that they could actually quote a DA number so that any prospective buyers could actually confirm it. But you see the thing is here's a little caveat where you know what the burden of proof is on the potential purchaser to check these things out and the seller can't be held responsible if you don't check these things out and find out for yourself. See I dare say 
that anyone has checked these things out for themselves would soon turn away from it because they cannot get straight answers and the answers seem to keep changing. And let's move on to the next thing. Well, it seems like this uh, young man has been stirring up a little bit of uh, interest in the mainstream media. And it seems to be that not many of them are actually reporting on the facts from both perspectives. They're only pre presenting the facts as presented by those that are allowed to speak out about it. Because, you know, Gillian Norman's got a gag order on her by these people, but they can slander and liable her all they want, it seems, because no matter where you go, Nightcap is putting down Gillian Norman. They are slandering her. She starts off in here and they just keep going. They've just got to bring her up at every point. So much so, look at these lovely little attachments they've put down here. Let me just show you quickly what they are. You've already seen this one in previous videos. It's the judgment summary. And I don't think it's actually the final judgment summary either. But they just pick the one that actually has got the, you know, the 200,000 first. And then this, the order. Uh, that is basically now you see one thing that uh, you have to understand here is that there are actually two cases in the Supreme Court that have basically finished up now so that they can be brought together as one overall issue as it needs to be and taken to the High Court now these two cases are Darwin versus Norman and Norman versus Wall, Rothwell Wall, who was the lawyer taking in all the money for this community. And it was the judge's recommendation to actually take on the lawyer for fiduciary trust issues. And this is why he recommended her to a pro bono lawyer that could deal with these particular issues whereby the lawyer has not upheld his fiduciary trust. Now that is just the lawyer taking the money for the nightcap community, who was then trading under the name of Mount Warning Eco Village. Now, the name of the village too is also questionable but that is another thing we'll bring up now I'm just going to take you on to the third document here but I'm going to do something before I do that hang on okay so what I just did then was cover Gillian Norman's address because it has been published her private details and personal address of a real person has been published on their website with an intent with the way that they actually hold her responsible and anyone that is associated with the community or aligns with them would see this woman as a threat. And they have given out this woman's address and put her at real risk. Now, do we remember a little video I did not so long ago where I talked about how a personality called Max Egan personality, a character, he might as well be a cartoon comic character, for as real as what he is. 
He's manufactured a name. He's manufactured a past that no one can verify. So I'm going to take all of that with a grain of salt to begin with. But after Max Egan found out I had revealed his address online, he told me how much I had endangered real people, that what I did was highly illegal. Now they might say that a, um, publishing a bankruptcy notice on their website is not illegal because it's public information what, that you could search. All right, so go search for the bankruptcy notice for Gillian Linda Norman and see if that, what you can see publicly, will actually give out her home address. I'm not going to uh, answer that because um, I think that anyone that wanted to know the answer could find that one out for themselves because there are certain things that are not divulged in a public forum and one of them especially through government searches is the actual address of individuals. They will give out on business searches the address of a trading business name or anything like that even if that individual lives there you know but that is an accepted um, revelation of their address that they have published knowingly and willingly to give out a real person's home address that knowing that there are people in the area she's an age pensioner and there could be any number of young hotheads that think, fine, now I know her address, I'm going to go around and harass her. Now this real woman is at more risk than this fake Max Egan. Because most people think Max Egan's a hero right now. No one's looking for, you know, no one's out for him because they've been ripped off and they hold him responsible. Not yet. That day will probably come though, I dare say, when everything falls apart. So this um, bankruptcy application was filed on um, Gillian Norman because of the $200,000 uh, defamation judgment. And it was also pointed out in the judgment that basically the judge made the judgments so that he could finish off the case, then she could take the objection to the High Court with the other case with the lawyer, bring it all together and bring it under all the one thing. Because you cannot take one little issue, separate it from the other, because the paying in of monies was actually being dealt with separately and the issues of the fiduciary trust breach by the actual lawyer Rothwell Wall was never even really brought up in the issue of how Gillian Norman is being told to shut her mouth about what she went through and what others went through or else or else we'll sue you so they did and she's been struggling with this for quite a few years now on behalf of others as well. She is trying to get back what has been taken from other investors who have lost, which is in the vicinity of, I believe, around $2 million from previous investors that have no benefit from the money that they put into that place. Now, the interesting thing is the Wollumbin Horizons, which is the company that purchased 3222 Kyogle Road, went into voluntary wind-up, and that was the recent sale that is yet to still go through. 
But let's take it back to Wollumbin Horizons, back in the day when Gillian Norman and all other investors had paid into that development around $2 million to purchase the land outright. So when Wollumbin Horizons purchased that land, it was bought outright with investors' money. Now, after it's been, no debt is owed and investors have an asset for what they've actually put, put money into, Wollumbin Horizons then turns around just before it declares itself voluntary in, puts itself into voluntary wind up, it takes out a loan against the property. And in doing so, the um, bank gets the lien on the property and first take at any monies received at the sale of the assets when Wollumbin Horizons gets folded up. Now this is where the Phoenix thing comes in. Um, when you've got members of the same community that are using their various assets to keep bringing it back into the, the um, community, it, it's, this is how it could appear to be bought and sold by the same people. But anyway, I'm not going to get too much into surmising and conjecture on that. It's just a lot of questions that, yeah, don't really make sense to begin with. But there are still a few more I've got to ask, so let's go to the next one. Now, the next seeming um, contradiction is this little statement down here that says, Nightcap on Minjimbul is not Bulla Bulla. Now you have to understand this is a press release statement. This whole statement is legalese. Um, you know, like, look at this one up here. Please clarify what you mean by involvement. They know that this is their list of answers back. There is nothing that they're going to be asking to get clarified. You know, and they are giving deliberately vague answers. And even when they say, oh, you know, my client is not trying to be evasive, it's like, yes, you are. You don't want to answer certain questions because if you answer certain questions, then people will be able to gauge how much money you've already taken in and how many people could also be at risk of losing that money, just like the previous investors. But they say here, Nightcap on Minjimbul is not Bulla Bulla. Now, I dare say that the lawyer that has prepared these questions based on the answers that he got back from the community isn't probably fully aware of what the developers told the consultant. Because what does the consultant say about the connection between Nightcap and Minjimbul on Bulla Bulla? I mean, Minjimbo on Bulla Bulla. Um, Bulla Bulla. The site currently comprises 21 allotments, commonly referred to as Nightcap and Bulla Bulla. So the whole 21 allotment is commonly referred to as Nightcap and Bulla Bulla. Or you could say Nightcap or Bulla Bulla. Or you could say that Nightcap is also Mount Warning Eco Village because that's its trading name before it changed its name to Nightcap. So it's the same business, same name, they, they link together. And Wollumbin Horizons is the purchaser of 3222. Now there could not be any connection made with these people but they are all belong to the same community they are all members working out of the same trough they're just using different assets to achieve the the ultimate outcome so we've got what seems to be contradictory statements here 
Nightcap on Minjimbul is not Bulla Bulla, but here it is. So I don't know which version of events they want to go with, but that does actually seem to be contradictory. So just to confirm that um, what I'm saying is correct, this is the top of the, the DA with the number and the two addresses involved. Well, 2924 and the other one that doesn't really have an address because it's more part of, I don't know, it must be under reserve status. I don't really quite understand that. But there are the two addresses that make up the three lots. And the three lots that they wanted, the three lot subdivision was originally a six lot. So they had to re reduce it down. So the approval here was only for stage one where they needed to put in the road infrastructure, do the public road works, put in the bridge, make a car park. Then you put in another DA for stage two where the village is not a concept but is detailed on the stage one that is already existing. So now that you've got stage one developed and it's there ready to go, what do you want to put as stage two? So stage one never happened back then and stage one now is the only application that they can be putting in with the concept for the proposal of the village. But first they need to get approval for stage one for 21 lots. Now this subdivision here was not very wanted and desired and there is more local opposition to it than there is people that want it. So basically reducing it from six down to three lots that was reducing consent and keeping the development small. The likelihood of them actually extending that out into thousands of acres and 21 lots is actually highly unlikely considering that most of these properties are bordering on national parks and state reserves and even um, with the development that is on that land itself that people can own, there is certain requirements to keep it within the standard of um, preservation, which is why they made very clear no pets, no hard hoofed animals. But we're finding that contradictions happen when the version of the truth gets handed down through different people and they put their slant on it. But this is on the this here is a press statement released prepared by a lawyer on behalf of the nightcap community. And he believes that in making that statement that is perfectly correct. Now I would suggest that I don't know about you but I don't actually know of many people that would walk into a, a lawyer's office and give them the whole 100% truth. The lawyer would know that their version of the truth is only going to be the one that is supportive to them. They actually need to find out if that is the truth before they put it out there and advise their client that saying this in this way is going to protect you legally. Because legally, that is a contradiction that can be brought up in court, is that you've got a clearly prepared legal statement on one hand by the community and another 
by the consultant for the community and they're saying different stories. They can't even get the name the same. And this is an important thing about the name too because this is how they devoid responsibility of um, certain actions and how they can take in two million dollars worth of investors money and kick them off the land they get none of it back and then turn around and sue because they said anything about it and get a judgment and ask to pay more money if there is anybody out there in Australia that is a lawyer that could help Gillian Norman and these other investors out and to well basically make it so no other people can be hurt by the activities that have been declared through willful intent by the developers to be deliberately concealing and to devoid them of any legal or financial responsibilities in the outside world outside of the community. This is their own admissions, not mine. We need to look at ways to make them responsible for their own actions instead of continually blaming the people that have actually lost out of this. I might point out that the developers of this multi-million dollar project do not seem to have lost too much out of it. Whereas past investors have lost over two million dollars. So where does the truth lie? Well, I think uh, Julia Norman and other past investors would really appreciate a good case lawyer, one that knows tax avoidance laws, ones that know corporate law. I mean, pretty much a general rounder because, you know, the facets that are involved with this deliberately intentful three-tiered system designed to hide behind, um, we need someone that has got the savvy to pick that to pieces, to point it out to the court. You know, because seriously, you know, some lawyers are shit. I can argue better than most lawyers in a court of law. In fact, I've actually been told that by a judge. I even had someone offer me a job after I appeared for myself. It's like, no thanks. I'll only fight the battles that are important to me. I'm not going to take on paid money for, uh, you know... No, as soon as you start doing that, that's when you sell your soul out. So no. So I'm quite capable of going into court and speaking for myself. I've got no qualms about that. I've also got no qualms about uh, out dancing many of the lawyers in court. They'd have to um, step up a bit. And after my experiences, let's just say that any weaknesses that I did have I don't anymore because I know where I did not prepare properly last time. So, you know, you don't make the same mistake twice. So, yes, things are warming up in the um, field of uh, people wanting to spread the uh, defamation around <laughs> and give the lawyers more money. You know, here, go and pick on this person too. Well... You know, that's what you risk. Do they want to go down that road with me? Well, it looks like I may poke the bear this time. Let's see if they um, do want to play. <laughs> and answer some questions. They're only simple questions and they're only questions about the information that you have actually provided yourself clarification and in the absence of answers all that one is left to do 
is to speculate. And that's what they leave it open to, entirely speculative. And I, I mean, uh, you can go to the nightcap and check out uh, these on their FAQ. There's links to them all. I'm not going to upload their <laughs> rubbish. Um, and I do call it rubbish. I mean, you know, what this legally prepared document, um, as I said, whoever prepared this should have actually checked on the facts that they were going to verify and release to the public and make sure at least it was in line with the information that has been released to developers by, I mean, to members by the developer's own consulting firm. There's 62 page glossy brochure on all the ins and outs. That's the, that's really the sales brochure. That's supposed to sell you that pretty little 62 page, make it look all official and yeah, I'm buying in. And you don't look too far. You don't ask enough questions. And if you're silly enough to do that, well, hey, you get what you get. And essentially, that's kind of what Max Egan said too. And I thought, yeah, I guarantee you that that's the attitude that all of you have got. That it is incumbent upon each person to do their homework. But they know most people won't. They will take it on trust and that you can sell them on that. For those few that do check into it, you don't want those troublemakers in your community. They're not group mentality or herd mentality. They're free thinkers. You don't want them. So, yeah, <laughs> reject them. <laughs> now, the last thing I'm going to deal with and leave it at that for this one is the update that they mentioned in the FAQ. This one. Where is it? Okay, so if you notice, this is August. August 2020. Now, you've already seen from the uh, press statement, there is most definitely two statements saying that a DA was submitted to council in 2019, November. So you would think that they would make reference to that when they ask this question here. Where is Nightcap on Minjimbal at in that process? Now you would think that they would make reference to the DA application, the date of lodgement in November 2019 and the consequence basic flow of events up until this point. But they do not confirm that it has been submitted, as does the press statement. They actually say is currently in the final stages of preparation. We have submitted project documentation regarding the concept DA. All right. So what, what are they getting at here? What project documentation have they submitted to council? How have they submitted it to council? Is it under a development application? Because you can't just go into council and say, here, take this paperwork, I'm submitting it. You have to submit it under something for a reason. So now they've already said it's been submitted in 2019. Now they're saying here that we've submitted project documentation regarding to it to the concept of the DA. So again, there's a little bit of confusion. And also too with the fact that the um, sale of 3222 Kyogre Road is still up in the air. Will it? Won't it? Or um, 
will there be uh, issues with not enough investors coming into the nightcap community that the nightcap community now through its member company can't pay that two million for the property so they're hoping that enough people will invest in the community before that deadline so that they will be able to pay with it for cash and just yeah keep milking the cow now if we look at will the sale of the Mount Burrell property settle now this is entirely 3222 Kyogle Road now of the five addresses it's actually not the bulk of the um, community but it yet seems to be the pivotal point at which the whole community can come together because from their perspective it looks like that without 3222 they can't have the whole development because if the whole development is pivotal on this going through in mid-October um, how is it pivotal? Why? When it only makes up a smaller portion of the development. I would put forward a guess here that maybe the larger part of the development cannot be actually developed or built on. So they need to be able to offer the development on the 3222 property which has already got cleared land on it which they have pretty well killed off if you look at Google Earth four years ago everywhere's green you look at it today everywhere but where they're in charge of is green where they are dead dead ground that's that's how much care they've taken and that's not an opinion that's Google Earth photographs if they've got it wrong well I'll retract you know, if someone wants to go and take a photograph and show me some nice, lush, green, rich soil there, and there should be, I mean, that is volcanic rich soil. Things can't help but grow in that soil, and yet they've killed the ground. How did they do that? I don't know. But I tell you what, there's not much loving of the land going on there. Just a lot of loving of how much money they can take in, how many sub lots they can divide it into, how many smaller members that they can bring in that support the mainframe structure of the hierarchy of those that are more equal than others. Yes, as AB has said, yeah, some are more equal than others. And anyone buying in, you're never going to be as equal as those controlling the company strings. You're going to be at their mercy. And there are people that have been involved with this under both banners. But when they say here, how many of those involved with Nightcap were involved with Bulla Bulla Community? Well, um, pretty much all of them. There's only two of them that I'm actually questionable about whether they're actually still members. And that's Mark Darwin and Steve McSween. I don't actually know whether they are still members. They have nothing to do with the community. But then there are those that are out there that are promoting themselves to have joined the community. They are members and thereby members of this deliberate and intentful um, system that's been designed by the community to hide activities behind. And again, this is not me surmising it. This is a statement out of Adrian Brennock's mouth. So if anyone needs to be held accountable, I'm just a parrot repeating what he said. So if you want to hold anyone accountable, hold him accountable. In fact, hold everybody accountable for what they've said. All I've done is repeat what they've said and ask questions. So if you boys in the um, whatever name you want to put on, Nightcap, 
Mount Warning Eco Village, Bulla Bulla, the Minjimbul Land Trust, or the Minjimbul Community Trust deed. I mean, I've got all of these um, detailed now. And all the people that are associated with it, uh, some of them have got their own trustee, uh, discretionary trust accounts too. So they're not only using member discretionaries to hide behind, but it seems to be a base way that is set up. And, yeah, why set up behind something anonymous? unless you've got something to hide. I don't know. I certainly do not think that there is any protection in being anonymous. None. Not for the people in the community or for the people on the outside. That ultimately, those in the community that said they want to be anonymous so they can't be held accountable, that's their deliberate intent. Well, once you've declared you're a member of the community, you have declared that intent. You are a member of the group mentality, the herd. You all think the same. Peas of a pod, birds of a feather flock together. Now what we need is a savvy lawyer to argue all these bits. In court for Gillian Norman and all those others that have lost. So if there's anyone out there that wants to do that for her, you know what, you're booking up one for the good guys. And you'll also be bringing back rewards because, yeah, if you've been in the legal profession, you know you've probably defended your fair share. That shouldn't have been. This would be a way of balancing out the scales a bit. Take up the opportunity. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's going to the High Court and there are going to be many issues involved, criminal issues, because uh, the nightcap community might be done with Gillian Norman and the past people that have lost money but they are not done with them, far from it. And people should take note that something's falling apart is only a matter of time. Think carefully, look very deeply at any decisions you make and especially when you can't get any clear answers that stay consistent. They keep changing. They're contradictory. There's something not right going on here. What that exactly is? <laughs> well, I suppose we'll find out, won't we? Because you know what? When you poke the bear sometimes, the bear growls back. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave you with that. To have a think about that. And I'll uh, catch you next time. Bye.